top headlines for tonight. PPP MPs bewildered after being denied entry into GPHC's drug bond. Nanlal still calling for Basil Williams to be sanctioned. Members petitioning for GPSU's election results to be overturned. Airfield Sapphire residents call on government to distill the drains. President David Granger accredits Republic of France ambassador to Guyana. And in court, alleged drug trafficker reminded once again. Good evening and welcome to MTV's news update for today, Thursday, May 4, 2017. I am Trisha Ramlal. The news begins now. The Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Social Services, which is mandated to oversee the public health facilities as part of its administrative functions, was left bewildered as access was denied to visit the Georgetown Public Hospital's drug bond. The opposition members who are part of that committee say gross disrespect was portrayed by the hospital's management. While oversight visits have been conducted to three other medical health facilities, no access was denied to the bonds, according to Chairman of the Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Social Services, Dr. Vindia Persaud. Expressing disappointment, Dr. Persaud questions why access was blatantly denied to the public health minister and other officials. When we got to the drug bond, we were up there and the CEO, in a very disrespectful tone, said the minister wants us to leave the drug bond, come down and conclude the visit. Now I said no, I am the chair of this committee and we are entitled, as is there in the constitution, to see any place. Because at the end of the day, we are an oversight committee. We are a committee that's there to scrutinize. According to the chair, the resistance boggles her mind as she tries to comprehend what might have been the reasons leading to such a denial. Noting that oversighting of an institution should not be facilitated in seclusion, Dr. Persaud says full access should be granted to the committee. On the other hand, she realized qualified and experienced medical personnel had displayed better management skills compared to the newly appointed faces in those institutions. Where you saw qualified medical personnel, the institutions were running very well. One, one hospital stood out for me, was the Linden Hospital. Very well managed, very well run. The problem there was drugs. And what we saw in some of the departments with some of the doctors who are very enthused and qualified, that they were progressive in their thinking and they are trying to expand services. So I think it should not be a, a bottom-down approach by this government. They need to speak to the people who have the expertise and to get recommendations from the people who are in the system. The visit at the Georgian Public Hospital Corporation on May 3 unearthed a number of deficiencies, including human resource and drug shortages. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Ghana Gold and Diamond Miners Association wishes to congratulate the small and medium scale miners for surpassing their gold declarations in the first quarter of 2017 as compared to the same period in 2016. The association said that all miners should be commended for continuing to bolster the economy in this time of reduced investment and economic slowdown. Ironically, while the gold and diamond mining sector is recognized by government for its importance in bolstering Guyana's economy, many of the needs of the small and medium scale operators continue to be ignored by the powers that be, the association in a release said. The GGDMA is still hopeful that the association can meet with President Granger and senior government functionaries to have these and other matters resolved to the mutual benefit of small and medium scale operators and the state. More news still ahead, do stay tuned. Bushy Park Beach Barica presents the After Arrival Day Beach Party on Sunday the 7th of May 2017 at the Bushy Park Beach. The After Arrival Day Beach Party. Prizes to be won for the persons dressed in the best Indian wear. Well stock bar. Music by Slinger's family. DJ Keston. From high by fashion too. It's all about the After Arrival Day Beach Party on Sunday the 7th of May at Bushy Park Beach. Sponsored by Banks Beer, GT Beer and Beach Beer itself. 
Nothing compares to the class and beauty of Beeson windows and doors. Engineered by professionals and built to last longer than the competition. Buy 10 windows and get one 24 by 16 bathroom window absolutely free. No tricks, no gimmicks, and no hidden fees. Prices started from 13.5 VAT inclusive. So visit our showroom today at Lot 1228 New Eccles Industrial Site or B Pats Building on Regent Street and save big on UPVC or aluminum windows. To order now, call 622 4197 or 226 1292. We are the experts when it comes to creative marketing, brand campaigns, concept development, and production. With our diverse knowledge and tactical marketing strategies, we are the go-to company to reignite your brand. Having been in the industry for over 20 years, we are Ghana's number one choice for brand development. The outcome of the Guyana Public Service Union's election has not found favor with some members as they are heading to sign a petition to revoke the current results and have the ballots recounted. Member of the Guyana Public Service Union, Gordon Nestor, during an exclusive interview with News Abate says they have rejected the results which were released by the Chief Elections Officer of the Union, Herman de Souza. Patrick Yard was announced as the victor of the election and is expected to continue leading the union despite doing so for three decades. Nesta claims that members who contested the elections were not given any statement of polls from their respective regions in which elections were held. The information has not been vetted. Uh, the spreadsheet that was given by, um, supposedly by Mr. D'Souza, um, cannot be deemed correct, cannot be uh, uh, a legal document because it has not been signed by Mr. D'Souza. Secondly, the SOPs, which is a statement of polls, um, does not exist, and therefore the information that is provided by whoever it is, Mr. Yard, I presume that he's the one behind the, all the information coming out because Mrs. D'Souza is not saying anything um, can be considered as null and void. Nesta believes that the incumbent president, Patrick Yard, has some involvement in his victory. It sounds as though that there is a, uh, this facade, uh, this information is used as a cover for Mr. Yard to, to return, return for another 30 years. The information is not correct. It can only be corrected by the authentic signature of the returning officer and the, the, the declarations from the various districts uh, according to what is written inside the rule book. The member says currently they are speaking with the entire members of the union to have a petition signed to overturn the election's results. We will be moving to the petition the workers to remove Mr. Yard and his team and, in, and install an interim, interim uh, a management committee to ensure that the business of the union is done in a transparent way. Some with of them, integrity, yeah. with morals, and uh, look towards the future so that the workers of this union benefit in some way or the other. On Thursday, April 27, the union held its election which saw hundreds of persons turning out at their respective polling places to select a president and executive members. Subsequently, during the course of the counting of the ballots, the presidential candidate Gregory Gasper and his supporters claimed that the elections officer of the union did not provide them with relevant documents pertaining to the holding of the elections. Those members are of the opinion that Yard did not win the election. Instead, they are making a serious allegation that Yard had influenced the elections officer of the union to place the ballots in his favor. All the trade unions outside there should be looking at this whole issue and come in and try to solve this problem before it escalates to a point whereby there's no return. This is a shameful, a shameful act. 
over 30 years of rigging? Come on. We can't go on for this forever. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. President David Granger on Thursday, May 4, accredited the Republic of France ambassador to Guyana. Republic of French Ambassador Antoine Jolie was accredited at State House by President David Granger on Thursday, May 4. Ambassador Antoine Jolie, who will strengthen ties between the two nations, said that France and Vienna has a lot in common and will together continue to protect the environment. Excellency, Mr. President, it is with great joy and honor that I will represent the French Republic to the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. My government appreciates the excellent bilateral relations with, with your government and we know that we are with you on the international scene, a trusted partner with whom we share the same values. I will cite as an example the Paris Agreement on Climate Change that you have signed and ratified or the transparency efforts that allow you to have a positive assessment from the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force that you will chair in 2018, which come along with an internal political agenda without concession to fight against corruption. This is Janice Abrams for MTV's News Update. President David Granger believes that by appointing a new chairman of the Public Service Commission is a step in the right direction following the removal of the previous chairman, Carbill Duncan. The head of state has presented the Office of Instrument to Patrick Yard in place of Duncan. Details in this report. Patrick Yard was sworn in as the acting chairman of the Public Service Commission by President David Granger at State House on Thursday, May 4th. President Granger says Yard will also be an ex officio member of the Judicial Service Commission, the Police Service Commission and the Gandhi Defense Force Commission's board. The president noted that the work of those boards is important in that it would not be paralyzed any further. Are aware of the circumstances of um, the removal of the previous chairman, but we are very confident that this is a step in the right direction and that the efficiency of those four commissions will be enhanced. With the appointment of the acting chancellor and acting chief justice, it is very important that the Judicial Service Commission um, starts to function, and I hope that this will happen from the 8th of May, on Monday. So I'd like to thank Mr. Yard for accepting the appointment. I'd like to thank the other members of the commission for the work that they're doing, and to wish them well in the weeks and months ahead. The acting chairman of the Public Service Commission, Patrick Yard, says he is very happy to be appointed to the post. The newly appointed chairman of the PSE says he will carry out his functions in accordance with the oath that he took before the head of state. It is my view and the view of the Public Service Union that the Public Service of Guyana be a very efficient, effective, professional career service, faithfully serving the government of the day and the people of the area. Okay? You know, there is no rocket science about that, and that is what we've been working towards. Efficiency, professionalism, modernization, uh, keeping members enlightened, keeping them sensitive to developments in the country and the needs of the people and preparing themselves to discharge those functions efficiently and effectively. Carvel Duncan was removed from the chairmanship following allegations of misuse of public funds as a board member of the Ghana Power and Light. In 2015, President David Granger had ordered a tribunal to determine whether the criminal charge Duncan was facing was enough to have him removed from the constitutional bodies. 
That presidential appointed tribunal comprised Justice Roxanne George Wilshire, retired Justice Winston Patterson, and attorney Robert Ramcharan. However, Duncan and his attorney Anil Nandlal moved to the High Court and had the tribunal halted by Justice Franklin Holder. This prohibited the tribunal from investigating and pronouncing on whether Duncan should remain a member of the Public Service Commission, Judicial Service Commission and Police Service Commission. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Guyana's financial obligation to the World Bank's Multilateral Investment Fund will be honored. The government's news agency says that Cabinet approved the payment of U.S. $1 million to the fund, quoting the Minister of State Joseph Harmon. The Multilateral Investment Fund was created in 1992 to augment the resources available to the International Development Bank for project financing. Guyana has contributed U.S. $950,000 thus far. The government's news agency says that Minister Harmon posited that the country has received U.S. $9.84 for every dollar invested in the fund. Coming up, Nanlal affirms that the AG must be sanctioned for his alleged misconduct. And a field Sophia residence calls for the drains to be desilted. Are you looking for mattresses, pillows, and water tanks? Look no further. Visit us at AF Home 75 Houston Public Road, East of Bangdamarara, next door to Houston Secondary School and our factory at 551 Friendship. We manufacture foam mattresses, pillows, and furniture foam in different sizes. We also take orders for custom-made pieces, dealers in tough tanks in various sizes. Yes, wholesale and retail in any quantity. Remember to check out AFS Shipping for all your shipping needs, locally and within the Caribbean. For more information, call 227-2372. 2270172 or 2262210. Come let our friendly staff assist you. Great service, best quality, and affordable prices. continues on MTV. After claiming that the sitting Attorney General Basil Williams threatened a judge, an allegation that has not been founded, the former Attorney General Anil Nanlal says that he must be sanctioned by the judiciary. If this is not done, Nanlal claims that it will set a bad precedence. Reflecting on the alleged rocus which occurred between the Attorney General and the judge at the High Court, Attorney at Law Anil Nandalal says such actions left unsanctioned will set a bad precedence. He believes sanctions must be given to those who have disrespected the judiciary, pointing to the alleged unprofessional conduct which was allegedly displayed by an important functionary of the executive, the Attorney General. The former Attorney General also questioned why the judiciary failed to issue a statement following the alleged mishap. The law has given the judiciary the power to protect its process, its process from abuse, and it must use it. If it does not do it, then all of us will begin to disobey it and disrespect it. Disrespect it. When that happens, the society falls into disarray. Another worrying issue is the appointment of judges, which has been halted for a long period, rendering the Court of Appeal in temporary dormancy, Nandalal said. He believes the process is being stopped through political directive from the coalition. He further alleged that the administration intends to appoint their preferred judges, despite the government has not hinted to that. In cases of such appointments, Nandlal says injustice will be served to the ordinary people who seek justice. So we reiterate our call to the Judicial Service Commission to ensure that its original advice tendered since March last year be acted upon or processed in the manner provided for and contemplated by the Constitution. As such, his party is calling on a commission to be guarded by the Constitution and not be manipulated through political directive. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The 
May June rain has begun, however, the residents of Airfields Fire are not taking any chances as they are calling for the distilting of the main canal. Find out more in this report. Residents of Airfields Fire are calling on the relevant authority to address the drainage woes they have been experiencing over the years. The residents say they have approached the Ministry of Public Infrastructure for assistance to provide a high mark to desilt the canal. The main canal was cleaned some time back. However, because of the construction of the new access road, the drainage works have been stalled. And uh, Mr. Ainsworth, who came to install that CDC, said that they will desilt this trench before this road is built. Specifically said that, that they will do it. They do the road and they didn't desilt the trench. We need this whole thing to clear. Desilt it so that the water could pass freely. We in desperate need. This, this is not something with government and position and all these things. We in desperate need. Every time the rain falls, place flooding. We don't want to be out here losing money and wasting time and calling you for, for, no, for no reason. We need this place dig urgently. When the rain fall, the place flooding and um, all kind of different feces and garbage and everything floating around in your yard, in the house and everything. All the yard, the water is full till, um, above your knee. Yeah, it was partly clean, but the machine that they used could not have do the total width of the entire um, canal. So they promised us to bring a longer um, machine with a, a machine with a longer boom that could cover the width of the trench, but it never came. So it's just promises and promises. So where you go back to the ministry is the amount of letters and protocol you got to go through. I don't think it is right for we just there. They're writing letters and going every week or wherever, and then here you can't see this minister. You got to write another a letter to this minister, and because this minister wouldn't be in for another month, you have to write to a letter to speak to the junior minister. I don't think this is right. What are also contributing to the flooding in the community are the squatters who occupy parts of the embankment. But because of the influx of squatters, and I must emphasize this, because the squatting is doing a lot of damages, not only affecting the machines to come in to drain the trench, but also when, they, when, when, they, when they, you have the flooding, the feces and things that is thrown by the squatters into this canal gets over into the... the, the, the the plots and the field and people, um, yeah, and could cause a great hazard to our community. I mean, if the dam was clear, the machine could go there. But then, as it is now, I think that they have to get some trucks or something to use here. Because to get those out is not going to be easy, buddy, man. It's not going to be easy. So they got to get trucks or something, but they got to use here to clean this. Because we can't allow this rain to come and get us, you know. The residents also complain about the roads which have been neglected by the authorities. All the road construction workers and contractors use that road, but now it's left like a dam and nobody's fixing it. You know? And who could we go to? It's just promises. As soon as the rain falls, you got so it's pure pool, you could swim inside. Right? And I mean, they did some roads here. Okay, I agree with those roads, but then this road was an access road that you had before, right? All you had to do is grade it. They grade it when they want the machines to pass to come and do this road, but they didn't see it fit to do that road. Nikki John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A six-member team has been established to look into the fears of those residential facilities for the elderly. The team will make recommendations to improve the lives of those persons in keeping with international standards. Details in this report. Within the next two weeks, the six-member committee will commence visits to approximately 20 facilities that provide housing and care for the elderly. The six-member team comprises of Abiki Samuels, as the coordinator, Ricardo Banwari, Kesta Garnett, Wendell Roberts, Dr. Laura Amores, and Demilsa Lambert, Director of Social Services, Wentworth Tanner says during the first quarter of 2016, the ministry embarked on a process to set minimum standards for elderly residential facilities across the country. Tanner pointed out that many of the residential facilities 
do not have the financial and technical resources required to effect the changes necessary to meet these standards. However, in the short term, the Ministry has set a number of priorities that will have to be realized by the residential facilities for the elderly. The Ministry hopes to identify innovative mechanisms to help existing charitable and non-profit facilities better serve the elderly in their care. This is to be done through the introduction of platforms for the sharing of experiences and maximization of resources and developing objective criteria for the future allocation of resources to elderly residential facilities. And last but not least, the Ministry will devise and introduce licensing, a licensing mechanism for, the, for these facilities. The licensing process will be underpinned by a multidisciplinary inspection process in the form of this visiting committee. Minister of Social Protection Amna Ali says this is the first committee to be established to look into the affairs of those facilities for the elderly. The Social Protection Minister believes that the elderly should not be forgotten because they would have served and contributed to the development of the country. They have made a tremendous contribution in our country. A lot of norms, attitudes, and uh, the, the way we live, it is because of the good training that we have had from our elderly. Sometimes people tell me I'm old timeish, but hello, don't worry with the old timeish. There are certain things that we ought to do. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Talks between the governments of Guyana and the United Kingdom are ongoing in relation to the ban on greenheart lumber from Guyana into the UK. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich, according to the government's news agency, said while the ban was not specifically raised during the visit, the president did raise the importance of the UK market to Guyana during his one-on-one -on -one with the Queen. Minister Greenwich was a member of the delegation that made the official state visit to the UK. The foreign minister said that the UK High Commissioner has been meeting British authorities on Guyana's behalf. The ban on Greenheart Lumber came under the previous administration. Minister Greenwich added that Guyana is hopeful for an eventful resolution of the issue. More news still ahead, stay with us. And see you, see you Jerry! Join MTV Channel 14 Cable 65 from April 5 to May 21 for the most spectacular T20 cricket, the 10th Vivo Indian Premier League 2017. All matches, including the qualifiers and final, will be televised. Watch eight excellent teams compete, Sunrisers Hyderabad, Royal Challengers Bangalore, Kolkata Knight Riders and others. Place your commercials during these super matches. Call now, let's design a package that suits your budget. For further details, please call your advertising agency or our friendly marketing team on 226-3593 or 225-0569. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Still with news update, welcome back. The People's Progressive Party is alleging that the Speaker of the National Assembly deleted a number of clauses in three of their motions that are scheduled to be laid in Parliament on May 8. Opposition Chief Whip believes that the Speaker does not possess the authority to do so. These amendments came after the opposition submitted three motions to Parliament, motions that they intend to lay in the House on Private Members' Day, May 8. The alteration to the motions has offended the opposition, according to its Chief Whip, Gaty Shearer. Paragraphs. Oh, the word onerous must be removed. 
just like the word in the MMA, talking about severe and grievous hardships has to be removed. Just like in the annulment motion we brought on the VAT on essential goods and services to revoke that and reinstate that, the words of the, the enormous impact on the poor and vulnerable in this country has to be expunged from our motion. According to Tishera, out of 11 of the stipulated clauses submitted on value added tax on education, four of them were amended. While some deletion allegedly incurs fact, Tishera says nine out of 17 clauses were deleted from the Commission of Land motion. The party believes the speaker should be guided by the admissibility of the motion, which should not be offensive, insulting and defamatory. It also points to unrelated matters of the government, which the party claims they upheld. He can inform the signer of the motion, the mover of the motion, that there are problems with the motion and it should be amended. He could even suggest the amendments that should be made. It is the mover of the motion that finally determines whether they agree with those amendments or not. However, the speaker cannot operate um, willy-nilly. He is guided by the other standing order that deals with the admissibility of motions. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Midwives Association Guyana held its seventh annual march and celebration for International Day of the Midwife 2017 at Umanayana under the team Midwives, Mothers and Families, Partners for Life. The Midwives Association Guyana, in partnership with the Ministry of Public Health, United Nations Population Fund, Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, and International Confederation of Midwives hosted International Day of the Midwife under the team Midwives, Mothers and Families, Partners for Life. On May 5, the day will be observed internationally. Chairman for the Midwives Association of Guyana, Trithi Gentle said, access to quality health care is important and a basic human right. Midwives are crucial in ensuring access to antenatal, perinatal and postnatal care. Key reason why, as midwives, you are and we are the very important and highly skilled professionals needed to achieve SDG 3 and ensuring the well being and quality of life for our mothers and newborn. Effectively carrying out our role in society and with our key partners, we ensure maximum development and the continuation of a healthy and well-educated nation. The chairman also said that there are ways in which partnering organizations can help the Midwest Association to make them comfortable and knowledgeable. We also crave your support of training programs to enhance our competency, to promote a supportive work environment. For example, having adequate restroom for our midwives. This is Janice Abrams for MTV's News Update. As Food for the Poor continues to aid the needy, the organization on Thursday distributed freezers, washing machines and printers, among other items, to 12 orphanages and 4 schools, including one from Region 9. Non-profit organization Food for the Poor donated televisions, gas stove, printers, along with other household items to 12 orphanages and four schools across the country. Project Managing Angel of Hope Coordinator Andrew Benjamin said, the initiative is one that is held annually and this year's recipients, especially those from the rural areas, were grateful for the items since they were in need of them. What we call our wish list initiative is something that is done annually every year by Food for the Poor. And what we do is that we have discussions with the homes under Angels of Hope program. We currently have 12 orphanages in regions 4, region and region 6 as well under the program. Recipients from the different homes also express their gratitude for the donations. My name is Michael Campbell and I'm from Save Our Kids, Cheer Our Home. I'm the house father. We are grateful and very thankful for everything that they have done and we project that they would do in the future. This is going to benefit us a lot. We have 52 boys and there's a very heavy workload of washing has to be done every day. So this washing machine 
is going to relieve or wash this so much, you know, it's going to bring a lot of relief to the orphanage in terms of having the children clothes washed in time and prepared. And we're very grateful to Food to the Poor, Angel of Hope, and all they've done for us. Miss Lillian Bob from the Rhinevelt Children's Home and Care Center. So we're very grateful once again to Food for the Poor. My name is Kenneth Finlayson and I represent Hope Children's Home from Enmore. How beneficial is this donation this morning to your organization? Oh yes, for sure a freezer is very needed. We have one that have worked out and the cover the, the is falling off and everything. And when we approach uh, Food for the Poor, they are willing to source one for us. And we really appreciate it because storing food is important um, to make sure we have adequate food in advance for the children. This is Yanis Abrams for MTV's News Update. A three-man team from the Guyana Water Incorporated, along with two contractors, will benefit from a one-week training in Oklahoma City, United States, from May 8 to 12, according to the government's news agency. The 20th Annual Resource Drilling Fundamental Training Seminar aims to provide efficient and effective drilling capability. GWI's Managing Director, Dr. Richard Van West Charles, explained that the company needs to continue to update itself with the new technologies in order to provide a certain degree of efficiency on well development and maintenance, as well as well drilling techniques. He noted that the training also signals the intent of having a partnership with contractors in achieving their mission to provide potable water to all Guyanese. Stay tuned for regional and international news, court round up, as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. What went down at the George Young Magistrates Courts on Thursday, May 4. After he was refused the bail by a judge in the High Court, alleged the marijuana trafficker Shamra Robertson petitioned for bail before Magistrate Judy Latchman. However, he was denied bail again. Robertson, 32, of Lot 101 Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, Keith Brasilio, a father of 22, his son Oliver Brasilio, 32, both of Lot 261 Blue Saki Drive, South Romvelt, and Clinton Chase, 66, of East Romvelt Housing Scheme, are charged for allegedly having 4 kilograms, 734 grams of marijuana in their possession for the purpose of trafficking. In addition, Oliver Brasilia was charged separately for possession of 10 grams of marijuana. Shamroy Robertson was also charged alone for possession of 440 grams of marijuana for the purpose of trafficking. The defendants have pleaded not guilty to the charges. They all have been released on bail except for Shamroy Robertson, who is awaiting trial in the High Court for possession of narcotics for the purpose of trafficking. Last year, he was committed to stand trial in the High Court by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, who ruled that a prima facie case was made out against him for the offence at the conclusion of the preliminary inquiry. A release from Kanu stated that on March 6, ranks acting on information 
went to Lot 261 Blusaki Drive South Romfeld and conducted a search, during which they found a parcel of bulk marijuana in a wardrobe. The release further stated that a small quantity of marijuana was also found on Oliver Brazilius person, bulk marijuana was also found in the possession of Shemroy Robertson and in a stove found in the kitchen of the house. The matter is currently in trial stage, which has seen several witnesses being called to testify. The trial continues on May 15 in the Georgetown Magistrates' Courts. Meanwhile, the absence of Assistant Superintendent of Police Mitchell Caesar, who is also the head of the Major Crimes Investigations Unit, has resulted in the preliminary inquiry into the murder of Trevor Abrams being adjourned until Monday. Abrams, 32, an engineer at the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, was riddled with bullets on February 26, 2015 at Little Diamond East Bank de Marara after heavily armed men ambushed him and opened the fire on his vehicle. Orrin Arthur, 27, of the 13 One Mile Wismar Linden, Stephen Prescott, 44, of 117 Covent Garden East Bang de Marara, and Yori Varswick, 26, of Maikoni East Coast de Marara, are jointly charged with Abrams' murder and are on remand. When the matter was called again before Magistrate Judy Latchman, the police prosecutor informed the court that ASP Caesar is currently out of the jurisdiction and requested a short adjournment to have the senior police rank testify. In the circumstances, Magistrate Latchman granted the request. Earlier this year, Orrin Arthur and Yori Varswick were committed to stand trial at the High Court in Georgetown for the murder of Sterling Products Limited security guard Wilfred Stewart of Grams Hall East Coast de Marara, who was shot dead in December 2014 by gunmen who forced their way into the Sterling Products Limited compound at Providence East Bank de Marara. Finally, Ishwar Hiralal was committed to stand trial in the High Court for attempted murder after he allegedly chopped his estranged wife at the Le Penitence Market. Hiralal, 38, of Anna Regina New Housing Scheme Esequibo, is accused of unlawfully and maliciously wounding Winita Hiralal with intent to commit murder on July 31, 2016. A preliminary inquiry into the matter has been conducted before Magistrate Judy Latchman, who disclosed that a prima facie case was made out against Hiralal based on the evidence led by the prosecution. During an unsworn testimony, the accused told the court that he acted in self-defense since the woman pulled out a knife and attempted to stab him. Ishwar Hirilal is currently out on $600,000 bail with instructions to report to the Criminal Investigations Department at the Romveld Police Station. The accused was also ordered to lodge his passport with the court. According to reports, Hirilal chopped his estranged wife with a chopper while she was shopping in the Le Penitence Market. Wanita Hiralal, 31, of Ling Avenue, Georgetown, was rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital with a fractured skull and several wounds about her body. Based on reports, Ishwar Hiralal came to the market and was walking around the area looking for her. It was reported that he constantly harassed the woman and did not want to accept that she had moved on with her life. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange Trading Session 719 for May 3, 2017. Attention to the Damarara Harbour Bridge schedule.
what the people say on this week's Hot Topic is next. Stay with us. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Hanuman Astrology located at Lot 136 Regent Street border between Light and Common Street. Are you disappointed in meeting astrologers and not getting a good solution from them? Come meet the most powerful spiritualist from India, Pandit Chivraj, to get rid of all your problems. Come meet Pandit once, he can read the past, present and future by hand prediction. He will help with problems such as health, marriage, love, job, financial, husband and wife, divorce, children, court, land, etc. Call now, telephone number 678-2628 to make an appointment or visit Lot 136 Regent Street border between Light and Common Street. On this week edition of What People Say, Guyanese share their views on the current shortage of medical supplies at public health facilities across the country. Well, okay, with the medical, right? Why it being shortage? You find a lot of corruption in it. When they get in it, you can't give accountability. That's my opinion. Well, I wouldn't. I can't tell you much because what can I tell you? I don't think I don't go to doctor, so I can't really tell you much. But in, with its children in the whole, they really need medical. And in um, the benefit for the pensioners, they also too. Because you got some I was there, some of them, you know, they cannot really help themselves. They need more assistance to them also too. Um, in with the drugs, appliance and so on, they need it. Um, take for instance, I got this um, malaria, especially like the interior and so on. I think those people need it more. That's supposed to be. Now we have the new government, now I think they're supposed to look into that. Even deal, deal with it. That's all I have to say. Have you experienced going to any health facility and being told that there is no me medication for your company? Well, yes, I, 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 did, I, did, I did so. The asthma that was there and they, they, they had drugs, so I had to go push it. Well, it's sad to know that we, we um, have a government claim that they're looking after the people and which is the poor people who depends on the free medical. And when they turn up there, sometimes they get expired stuff. And sometimes when they go, there's no, no drugs to keep after return, which is very bad. Or they do have to go and buy it at the pharmacy, which is outside. So it's sad, it's sad. What would you recommend, given that you experienced it at first time, what would you recommend be put in place to address this issue? Well, what, what I, I may say, our government got, got to look into that and even deal with that situation. To have things readily available, you know, accessibility and availability, you know, easily accessible and, you know, they have uh, the supplies rolling you know, you, you have to roll over. Really and truly, too, they need um, a reshuffling in the whole um, in the whole area. The health sector? The whole, yeah, the health sector, they need a reshuffling. Because to me, like, the people they have there, they probably can't run the system. So they need um, a reshuffling. What I will say, as a theory, they got to look at it. And able to get the drugs in, into the country and able to the poor people to able to get drugs. Because poor people can't afford to go to see a doctor to pay a money. The poor people depending on the government, especially the pensioner like myself. I'm a pensioner. I have no money to see no doctor. I, I depend on the hospital. 
For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Lakan. That sums up our newscast for the night, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. PPP MPs bewildered after being denied entry into GPHC's drug bond. Nandla still calling for Basil Williams to be sanctioned. Members petitioning for GPSU's election results to be overturned. A field Sapphire residents call on government to desilt the drains. President David Granger accredits Republic of France ambassador to Guyana. And in court, alleged drug trafficker remanded once again. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Friday, April 5. On behalf of our news team, I am Trisha Ramlal, thanking you for watching. Remember, suicide is never the answer as problem comes and goes.